Every leaf that falls off every tree, Allah has perfect knowledge of it. And He knows everything that is happening on the land and in the sea. Nor even a grain somewhere within the darknesses of the earth. And nothing dry or moist except that it is with Allah written in a clear record. That is the knowledge of Allah. How can you say Allah does not see me or has Allah not heard my dua? He hears you, he sees you, he's aware of your situation. Why does he do the things he does? We'll get to that in a moment. But for now, understand he knows. And that is why the scholars, they say something which is actually quite difficult to get your head around. Actually impossible. They say Allah has knowledge of what has happened in the past and what is happening at present and what shall happen in the future. Take note of number four. And he has knowledge of those things that shall never happen. If they were to happen, how they would happen. SubhanAllah. The infinite probabilities of circumstances that will never unfold. But if they were to unfold, Allah knows how they would unfold. And you say Allah does not know? Or you doubt whether he hears your dua? I would like to speak to you about a topic that troubles a lot of Muslims. It has in the past and it continues to trouble a lot of them today. If we were to ask any person here in this room what are the pillars of Islam, most of us would know they are five. That represent the outward things that we are supposed to do, the physical elements of the religion. If we were to talk about the level higher, and that is Iman, faith, what are the pillars of that, most of us will know that they are six. Six pillars of faith that represent what we are supposed to do inwardly. To believe in Allah, the angels, the books, the messengers, the day of judgment, and Qadar, the topic of today. Divine decree. Somebody may say, how come that these are the pillars of faith? Whilst we know that the things that we are required to believe in, they are many. We believe in so many things as Muslims. Things that are unseen, things that we haven't smelt, seen or touched. But why from the many were these six elements of faith given the title of Rukun, pillars of faith, meaning you and I, we cannot be considered Muslims till we accept every one of those six. And I say, dear brother, dear sister, the answer to this from the many is because of the influence that these pillars of faith, these six, have in liberating the mind and the heart and the soul of a Muslim. Let me demonstrate. Pillar number one, belief in Allah. That has a huge effect in liberating the Muslim's mind from every false attachment, whether it's to an idol, to a man, to a woman, to money, to a desire, to an idol, whatever it may be, it liberates you. That is pillar number one, belief in Allah. Pillar number two, belief in the angels. That has a huge benefit in liberating the Muslim from needing to find an angelic example of how Allah is to be worshipped. That is number two. Pillar number three, belief in the prophets that liberates us from needing to find a human example of how Allah is to be thanked and worshipped. Pillar number four, belief in the books, the scriptures that liberates us from needing to find a divine guidance, scripture, as for how Allah is to be worshipped and how to live an upright, happy, depressed, free life in the life of this world. Pillar number five, belief in the day of judgment that liberates us from the life of this world. And therefore, when you find that any element of dunya which you may have missed out on has left you, you don't collapse like a ton of bricks. You don't break down without repair. You remember there is a day of judgment. Where Allah will give you your fantasies and your desires and your yearnings and the things you missed out on today in the fullest and the purest of forms on the day of judgment. It liberates you. As for pillar number six, this also liberates you. 
Belief in Qadr. Belief in divine decree. This liberates the Muslim mind. So that when something comes to you and you did not want it to come to you, you remain happy. Or something that does not come to you but you wanted it to come to you, you remain happy because you believe in something called Qadr. Divine decree. And notice, dear brother, dear sister, how belief in Qadr, divine decree, is number six in the list. The bottom of the list. Or if you wish, the last of the list. Almost as if we are being told that if your belief in Qadr, divine decree, is in place, is in check, then every other of the five beliefs will also be in check. If your belief to Qadr, however, is crooked, then your belief in the remaining five will also be will also be crooked. Today I would like to share with you a few thoughts to speak about Qadr. And I guarantee you, dear brother, dear sister, you will walk away from this lecture with a tangible shift, a major change in the way that you approach any one of the problems that comes your way, be it marital, be it social, be it financial, be it spiritual. How will we speak about Qadr divine decree today? Not from an academic perspective. That has its place, that has its sitting, that has its time. I would like to present you, dear brother, dear sister, with four gateways. And my request, my pitch today, is that any problem you have, pass it through each one of those four doors. And what will be from the other side, you will have a problem that has diminished and life that you will enjoy. So lend me an attentive ear. Gateway number one. This is Al Imanu Bi Adlillahi Tam. To believe that Allah is absolutely just. Therefore, before you say, Why me? Why not her? Was that fair? Why did Allah Almighty send that my way? I wanted this, they did it. How come they've got their hands on it, not me? This is not just somebody may say, Astaghfirullah, I say to you, remember gateway number one, the absolute justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pass your problem through that door. What is the evidence for this gateway, you may say to me? I say to you, Allah Almighty said, Inna Allah la yadlimu mithqala dharrah. Allah Almighty does not do injustice to even the weight of an atom. Allah Almighty said, وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِظَلَّامٍ لِلْعَبِيرِ Your Lord does not do injustice to His servants. Allah Almighty, He said, وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا Your Lord does not do injustice to anyone. Allah, who has given Himself the name, according to many scholars, Al-Adl, the most just. What type of justice will He offer? Even if you don't see it that way, pass your problem through this gateway that says Allah Almighty is the most just. And brothers and sisters, I would like to share something with you. Believing in this one gateway has a profound effect in removing so much sorrow from your life. In fact, the very dua, prayer, supplication of sorrow that we make when you are down, there is a reminder in it that Allah Almighty is just. The narration which Ahmed narrates on the authority of the companion Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, that our beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the dua of sorrow is as follows. Allahumma inni abduk. O Allah, I am your servant. Ibn Abdik, son of your servant. Ibn Amatik, son of your maid servant. Nasiyati biyadik, my forelock is in your hands. Ma din fiya hukmuk, your command over me will always be executed. Adlun fiya qada'uk, and your qadr, your decree over me is always just. Underline that. Your decree over me is always just. And then you say in your dua, As'aluka bi kulli ismin huwa lak. I ask you by virtue of every name that you have. Samayta bihi nafsak that you have given yourself. Aw anzaltahu fi kitabik or a name you have taught us in your book. 
or a name that you may have taught to one of your creation. Or a name that you have kept secret to yourself. That you make the Quran the life of my heart. And the light of my chest. And the departure from my grief. And the release from my sorrow. He said, anybody who says this dua, Allah will replace his grief with happiness. The companions, they said, Messenger of Allah, should we memorize this? He said, every Muslim who hears these words should memorize it. This is gateway number one. Do you remember it? The gateway that says, Allah is most just. Therefore, expect good of Him and don't doubt Him. There is justice in what has come your way. Gateway number two. Al-Iman bi-ilmillahi al-muhiyat bi kulli shay belief that Allah Almighty's knowledge encompasses all things. It is essential if you want your belief in divine decree qadr to be in place to pass your problem through that second gateway as well. That Allah knows. Therefore, before you say, how come? Does Allah not see me? Can Allah not hear me? I remind you of this gate. Allah sees all and He hears all. There is no sky that obscures His vision from another sky. And there is no sound that obscures His hearing from another sound. What is private to you is public to Him. And what is hidden to you is revealed to Him. Allah Almighty, He said, Alam ya'lam bi yara? Does He not know that Allah can see? Allah Almighty said to Prophet Musa and Harun, I am with you both. I hear and I see. Allah Almighty, He said, We said to you, O Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, I have encircled people completely. Allah has knowledge. And Allah Almighty said, Think about this ayah. With Allah are the keys to the unseen. No one has knowledge of them except Allah. And He knows everything that is happening on the land and in the sea. And there is no leaf that falls off any tree except that Allah has full knowledge of it. Nor even a grain somewhere within the darknesses of the earth. And nothing dry or moist except that it is with Allah written in a clear record. That is the knowledge of Allah. Did you hear what I just recited? Every leaf that falls off every tree, Allah has perfect knowledge of it. How can you say Allah does not see me? Or has Allah not heard my dua? Pass your problem through the second gateway. That says Allah sees all. He hears you. He sees you. He's aware of your situation. Why does he do the things he does? We'll get to that in a moment. But for now, understand he knows. And that is why the scholars, they say something which is actually quite difficult to get your head around. Actually impossible. They say Allah has knowledge of what has happened in the past and what is happening at present and what shall happen in the future. Take note of number four. And he has knowledge of those things that shall never happen. If they were to happen, how they would happen. Subhanallah. The infinite probabilities of circumstances that will never unfold. But if they were to unfold, Allah knows how they would unfold. And you say Allah does not know? Or you doubt whether He hears your dua? Gateway number one, Allah is the most just. Gateway number two, Allah sees all and hears all. Gateway number three. Al-Imanu bi-hikmatillahi baligh. To believe that Allah Almighty is absolutely wise in everything He does. That will allow your heart to rest. And the amount of doubt that we may have in our hearts will come flushing out if we understand this third gateway. Allah is wise. And if you want a demonstration of this, a snippet preview of Allah's wisdom, I share with you a story that all of you are aware of. 
the story of the Prophet of Allah Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. If you and I had access to the script of the story of Yusuf, before the event unfolded, I can guarantee that most of us would choose to edit the script and change certain parts of it. I mean, you, you read in the script that this baby Yusuf is going to be thrown in a well. You'd say, why does that have to, have to happen to a child? No, we'll change that. You see that his brothers will conspire against him. You know, that he doesn't have to go through that. We'll change that. You see then he will be sent to Egypt and sold as a slave and separated from the arms of his mothers and fathers. Why should any child have to go through that? We'll, we'll change that. You read in the story that he's going to grow up to be a very handsome man and then a woman will seduce him to do the act of immorality with her. You say, no, there's no need for that. We'll change that. And then you read that he's going to be thrown behind bars for some years. Why does he have to go through that? He's a prophet. He's got better things to do. We'll, we'll change that. But had Allah Almighty accepted those changes, would the story have panned out the way it did? And would the ending have been as perfect as it is today? The answer is no, to show you the wisdom of Allah and the ignorance of man. Allow me to demonstrate this. Rewind in the story of Yusuf. If Prophet Yusuf had not been the subject of conspiracy when his brothers wanted to kill him, Yusuf would not be have thrown inside of the well. If Yusuf was not thrown inside of the well, he would not have been picked up by the Egyptian businessman. If he was not picked up by the businessman who sent him to Egypt, he would not have been sold as a slave. If he had not been sold as a slave, it means that he would not have been seduced by the wife of the ruler. If he was not seduced by the wife of the ruler, he would not have been put inside prison. But if he was not put inside of prison, his ability to interpret dreams would not have been discovered. If his ability to interpret dreams was not discovered, he would not have met the ruler. If he had not met the ruler, he would not have been able to save the whole of Egypt that was going to experience a famine. If he was not able to do that, then it means he would not have been appointed as a treasurer. And had he not been appointed as a treasurer, he would not have been able to invite his mother and father and his brothers from Palestine and live with him in Egypt. And they lived happily ever after. Subhanallah al -Azim. Wisdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can you doubt him? Everything that he sends your way is because it's what you need. Even though it may not be in line with what you want. But trust him and allow these doubts to disappear once and for all. This is gateway number three. Allah is the most wise in everything he does. Allah ya'lam. Allah knows. Wa antum la ta'lamun. And man does not know. This is gateway number three. Rest assured. Allow your heart to rest. Allah knows. And Allah is wise. Gateway number one, Allah is the most just. Gateway number two, Allah Almighty has knowledge. He's aware. Gateway number three, Allah Almighty is wise in everything He does, even if you don't see it that way. Gateway number four, and I will conclude with this. Allahu yaf'alu ma yasha. Allah does whatever He wants. I know a lot of people don't like to talk about this. Maybe it's not politically correct, and maybe it is not suitable for a stage, maybe it's not suitable for TV. But it is a reality when understanding Qadr and things that Allah sends your way, or to the Muslim Ummah at large, Allah does what He wants. Whose kingdom is it? It's His kingdom. The earth that you're walking on, it's His earth. The air that you are breathing, it's his air. The body that you are borrowing, that's his. He does what he wants. Who are you? Who am I? Petty creatures to challenge Allah Almighty's wisdom and to say, how come? Why me? Allah says, I do what I want. It's my kingdom. Allah Jalla Jalaluhu said in the Quran, speaking about Maryam, Mary, she said, my Lord, how can I have a baby? When no human being has ever touched me, what was the response from Allah? He said to her, thus it will be Allah Almighty creates whatever He wants. Allah Almighty said in another ayah, whoever Allah humiliates, no one can honor, Allah does whatever He wants. 
Man may say, how come my dad hasn't embraced Islam? I've been giving him da'wah now for, for 15 years, still not being Muslim. I say to you, it's Allah's kingdom. He does what he wants. He's not given permission for your dad's heart to become Muslim. You say, how, how come I'm still poverty ridden? I'm still a poor man, broke. Yet all of my friends are doing better than me. They haven't got half the skill set that I have. I say to you, it's Allah's kingdom. He does what he wants. He hasn't given you permission to be rich yet. Allah does whatever he wants. So therefore, allow your heart to settle. Be pleased, brothers and sisters. These are four gateways that I would wanted to share with you. Remember them. The justice of Allah, the knowledge of Allah, the wisdom of Allah, and Allah does whatever he wants. Four gateways. Whenever you have an issue, be it Islamic or otherwise, pass your problems through these gates. When you see a horrible video about something happening to the Muslims, whether in China, or in Syria, or in Bala, or any other place, pass our problems through these four gateways and watch how our hearts will rest with Allah's decision. He knows. And that is why there is a beautiful ayah in the Quran that summarizes everything we said. He said in Surah 64, Allah said, Any calamity that befalls you, He said, realize it is by the permission of Allah. And then He said, but whoever believes in Allah, Allah will guide his heart. Allahu Akbar. Do you feel the medicine? But whoever believes in Allah, like the four gateways we understood and others, Allah will guide his heart. There is another recitation of this ayah. The recitation of Al-Krimah that reads as follows. Whoever believes in Allah, his heart will rest. Al-Qama, he said, explaining this ayah. This verse is in reference to a person who is afflicted with a trial. But then he realizes that it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so his heart surrenders to Allah and his heart relaxes. Ya salam. Allahu Akbar. Brothers and sisters, in Islam in conclusion, think good of Allah. Expect the best from Allah. And dispel the shadow of doubts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed this world beneath your feet. So why are you carrying it on your back? Relax and think good of Allah Almighty. Realize that the, the sea that baby Musa was thrown in, it didn't harm him. Yet it was the very same sea that would destroy the Pharaoh when he was inside and he was at his strongest. Which shows you that when you are close to Allah, your weakness will not harm you. And when you are distant from Allah Almighty, your strength will not benefit you. Think good of Allah, dear brothers and sisters. As Ibrahim, he would say to his people, What are your expectations of Allah Almighty? He said to the people. Think good of Him, and Allah Almighty will be as you expect of Him.